Hi everyone and welcome to this follow up video. This follows on from how I process wood and in this I'm going to take some spalted beech, cut it into pen blanks, stabilise it and make a pen. So enjoy the video and thanks for watching. There are two main ways to stabilise, either under pressure or in a vacuum. I will be using a vacuum chamber. This will be the little mini oven I said earlier on in the last video that I'll be using for drying out some of the wheat spalted beets that I showed you before. This is the spalted beech that you can see. So. It's around about 24% or 23 Just going to place Temperature is getting up to around 95 to 100 degrees C and uh, once it gets around to about that I'm just going to let that sit and uh, cook for a couple of hours. It's the next day, lest these um, left to cool overnight. We'll take them out, Let's try one. And it's zero. Cut one open here. So, going to the points just fit. Oh, have to turn it on. And it's reading zero. That's perfect for stabilisation. Just to see how much the resin it actually takes on, I'm just going to weigh them before and after stabilisation. It's in ounces, but it doesn't really matter. The seven blanks weigh a total of six and a half ounces. The equipment needed for the stabilisation is some stabilizing resin i'm using one known as cactus juice there are others you can color it if you wish but i'm leaving it just natural i have some vacuum pump oil which doesn't need to refill nine again a vacuum pump some sort of cylindrical solid chamber i've had to make the top again out of some perspex because the original one all crazed and you won't see inside so i've just done that at some stage I will turn it to a circle and make it all um, nice and nice. A container to hold the blanks, some wedges or some weights, and obviously the material that you're going to stabilise. So just put the blanks in a little tray. I've changed the weights to the little uh, discs that you use for wood turning. So the other ones didn't fit. Close the, place those in and pour in some cactus juice. It's important to make sure you cover the wood quite a bit because this will get sucked up. Just notice the fill level at the moment. It's reusable, so it doesn't matter how much you put in, you can just pour it back into the container 
and you can reuse it later. Then carefully set that into your container. I've placed a little container of the uh, stabilizing liquid and wood blanks. Now placing over, it's a piece of silicone which I've had to cut out. Bought this online and again I might turn this into a circle, cut around the circle sometimes, as long as it's just, it fits onto the rim of the container itself. Place on the lid and attach the tube. With the vacuum reading close enough to minus one, I've turned off the little valve and it's totally safe now just to remove the vacuum pump. It doesn't leak because it'll, it'll be immediately obvious if it did. You can put then everything else away. And leave that to stay until you see it's still frothing and just leave it until there are no bubbles left. Still some micro bubbles coming out of the wood, so I'll just wait until they're virtually gone. With the bubbles all gone now, just going to slowly release the pressure from inside the chamber. Remove the weights. Don't worry, the actual resin itself is fairly inert and harmless. You can use it on your fingers or you can use gloves if you want. Doesn't really matter. Then individually just take each piece of the wood, shake off the excess and wrap it in silver foil. Once they're all done, silver foil is really just to prevent the resin from spreading all over the place. I and mean, you could put the wood set individually on the tray itself and try to cook them. You'll find that they'll stick together. So it's just to stop them from sticking together. And just decant the rest, the remainder of the oil, back into the container. Once the temperature hits around right about 89, 90 degrees, time to put in the wood. Again, just the same as before. Just monitor the temperature, then about 80, 80, 88 to 93 or something like that. I just keep monitoring it. It's dropped a wee bit because obviously I had the door open, but it'll soon rise. So I spent a couple of hours to let it cool down. These have been left cooking for two and a half to three hours. Should be very cold. And there we go. Or cold. So let's have a look what we've got.
you can see the crystal all stuff all over the outside of it but we'll soon fix that let's just continue to unwrap them quite boring really I'll just stop the video and you can know, see the finished results when I've unwrapped all seven of these. So there are the finished seven pieces of spalted beach stabilised in resin. There's crystals on the outside so I'm just going to remove that and then we'll weigh it. So just use a belt sander to remove the excess crystals or excess resin there. With the pen blanks nice stabilized, just going to weigh them just to see if there's a difference. Again, it's measuring ounces, but it doesn't really matter. So it's reading just over oh, 12 inches. So I'm going to make one of these pen blanks into a, a pen. I'm not going to show the full process of how I made a pen because that's in a previous video. I'll just fa fast forward through making the pen and you'll see the end result. As before, just going to mark out on this pencil blank. Just to make sure that they're both size. So that's roughly where I'm going to cut. And Just drill a hole out starting from the centre on both sides. Drills turned down low. You notice the difference in the shavings now? There isn't any shavings, it's more like dust. While we're just waiting for the uh, super glue to dry, just a little reminder about it's important to look at the bushings for this broad or streamlined pen because the ends, one is slightly thicker than the other and you can feel the difference because one is for the nib and the other one is for the cap. And obviously they've got the centre band too. So it's important that you orientate which way you want the pen to be and where you want the pen blank to actually have its nib and its cap. Again, just going to square these up straight forward until you see the brass.